Let's solve a contest. So this is prepared and we are ready. I also yesterday bought a new keyboard because the previous one its keys start started breaking. Well, only four problems. I I remember this contest. Oh my god, I remember this contest. So the author of that round was O U U An. Nauno is a girl. Nauo is a girl who loves playing games related to portals. The rows are numbered from 1 to N. The columns are from 1 to N. R C the portal is a pair of doors. If you walk into a cell without a door, you must walk into the next cell after the after that without changing the direction. If the next cell does not exist, you must exit the grid. So yeah, I cannot change my direction at all. You have to set some portals in the grid so that if you walk into I1 facing right, you will eventually exit the grid from Ri, N and if I walk into one I, I exit from NCI and Ri's and CI's are permutations and I need to find the solution Well, well, it's sad. It's a sad problem. Okay, problem B. Ladies shop has recently... Oh, this is an old problem. Ladies shop has recently opened in the city of Ultima Thule. To get ready for the opening, the shop bought N bags. It is characterized by the total weight AI. The weird thing is you cannot use these bags to put a set of items with the total weight strictly less than AI. However, the weights of the items that will be sold haven't yet been defined. That's what you should determine right now. We need to find the set of weights PIs such that any bag will be used. For any set of items that have total weight less than or equal to M, there is a bag which you can put this set.
of all sets of the items weights that satisfy points 1 and 2, find the set with the minimum number of weights. So actually I need to create a instance, an instance of a backpack problem in which pair 1 etc pk is exactly the set of reachable numbers. Well, I believe I always need to take P1. Then I always need to take the minimum number P2, which is not covered by P1. Then I need to take the minimum number P3, which is not covered by P2, and etc. However, how to do it fast in 4 seconds on the... So, I have, like, sorry, my mouse is invisible for some reason. Okay, let's leave with it. So, I have a Boolean vector, V, and let's call an operation. But maybe I need to restart it. Sorry. Because I really can't stand not seeing my mouse pointer. Sorry. I can't stand not seeing my mouse pointer. So let's assume that I have some boolean vector. V. Let's call an operation star. So U star V is the set of ones such that u star v i if and only if exists j such that u j is true and v i minus j is true so this is like convolution boolean convolution yes So I want to find such a vector v. So I am given a v, and I need to find minimum vector u such that u times u is v. No, actually, u, actually, v times u is v. Yeah, or, or in other wor words, u to power infinity equals v. Okay, this doesn't sound exactly easy. So let's go on. Problem C. Crossport expert Adil Beck is taking his probability theory test. And he has estimated that he will be able to start the test only t seconds after coming. Fortunately, he can spend time without revising any boring theorems or formulae. He has an app on the smartphone which contains n Japanese crosswords to solve. He wants to solve them one by one in their order. For each crossword, number chi is given on average. He wants to calculate the expected number of crosswords he will be able to solve completely. Can we calculate it? <sighs> oh. 
Ah, oh, okay. Problem D. Notepad. Nick is attracted to everything unconventional. He doesn't like decimal numbers anymore, and he decided to study other number systems. A number system with base B caught his attention. He wants to write in his notepad all the numbers of length n without leading zeros in this number system. Each page in Nick's notepad has enough space for C numbers exactly. Nick writes every suitable number only once, starting with the first clean page and leaving no clean spaces. Nick never writes number zero. Number zero or digit zero? As he has unpleasant memories about zero divide. Would you help Nick find out how many numbers will be written on the last page? What? So he chooses length n. He writes... Guys, why do you keep writing amount of numbers? Amount is for uncountable nouns. Amount, like amount of cheese, maybe. Not amount of numbers. Before he starts studying it, he wants to write in his note, but all the numbers of length n without leading zeros in this number system. So it seems like we need to calculate the number of numbers with n digits without zeros. Modulus C. Yeah? No, he, he can write. In binary number system, he can write zero. So, so what do you mean? Ah, you mean if n equals one, then he never writes number zero. Okay, sounds fair. Okay, so we have the following problem. Find b minus one times b to the power n minus one modulo c. Well, to do that, we need firstly to find b modulo c, and then we need to factor number c so that we can take n minus 1 percent phi of c. And finally, we multiply it by b1 minus 1. Okay, this is the easiest problem among all that I have here. So that's what I will do. Let's go. Sorry, I am not acquainted enough with my keyboard. Of course. So we need to like uh, include files So solve the tests and let's also like print the duration.
great. Okay, so here we read B, N, and C. We print find ans of B, N, C. Great. So, actually, the answer is never zero, because you can see that like it's b minus 1 is, is at least 1. Okay, so this is definitely non-negative. So, we need to find some answer. And then if ans equals 0, then ants plus equal to c, and then we return ants. Well. Great. So first of all, let's make the canvas of the solution, and it's quite easy. So let's write int b equals, equals what? Equals decode b in uh, number system c. No, ju just modular C. And then int n equals decode n uh, modular phi of C. And finally, it seems like we need to find ans as difference of uh, B and 1 times... Power mod of B, the power of N, no, I don't like it, I don't like it, because, because you see, the problem with it, with this approach is, I, I cannot replace it with n minus one percent phi of c uh, if if b and c are not relatively prime. So actually, if b is at most thirty, I cannot do it. So what do I do then? Well, it's actually easy to check if n is at most thirty. It's actually easy to check if n is at most 30. So, like, let's just do like this. If n dot size if n dot size is at most Is it most two? And then we say that n equals decode n and like like one hundred is enough. Otherwise, n should be decode. Otherwise, let's calculate. Int p equals phi of c, and we will decode n modulo p and add p. So we now need several uh, simple things. 
let's go through them. In the code of uh, string b int c. So this is straightforward. We go through all characters in b. And we say that ANS equals product of ANS and 10 modulus C and ANS is sum of ANS and A minus 0 modulus C and return ANS. And also Also, I think it would be better, like, let, let's, digits i equals i percent c. So here I can simply use digits a minus zero. Let, let's like do it to 11 and here we multiply by digits 10. Now let's write the primitive for sum. And for difference. And for product. And here we need to using LL equals long form. Now we need power mod. So if b percent, if b and one ans is product of ans a m, if b is divided by two a is product of a a m, and return ans, and then. We need finally only. Why? What? Ah. Okay, let, let's store n minus 1. So here n minus 1 will be uh, this decode minus 1. And here n minus 1 will be just this number. Yeah, because if n is of length at least 3. Yeah, it's not allowed to have leading zeros. Yeah, it's not allowed. Great. Now we need only the function phi. And for that, let's return phi of factor 
of n. So now we need two functions. Uh, factor and uh, a factor and phi. So they both are easier. So here, let's go through. all entries in factorization we see that answer multiplied by p dot first minus one and four int i equals one i is less than p dot second ans is multiplied by p dot first then we return ans and then we need the factorization which is also quite fun So it's the answer. For int i equals to i times i is it more than plus plus i. If n percent i equals zero, like okay, auto check rhyme equals uh int prime then we say that ans dot in place back p1 p0 p and then do while n percent p equals 0 we n divide by p and plus plus ans dot back dot second Okay, and here we check prime of i, and then if n is at least 2, then we also check prime of n. Then we return ans. Okay. And here we need cons. Let's check our solution. Oh. And op. <sighs> C vector is undefined. If you include a vector, and we need to remove C vector. Ah, here also I need to return true and if I failed to read this, I need to turn false. No errors. 14. It doesn't make sense. Fourteen. Here yeah, it's fourteen. Let's submit it. The testing is kind of slow, and also it's wrong answer on test 13. Are you kidding me? Ah. Well, I know what did what I did wrong, which is sad, but let's fix it fast. So I need to add at least like 30. So how to add at least 30? I need to multiply P by, by some number, which is at least 30 over P. And to calculate any number, which is at least 30 over P, I need to take 30 plus P minus 1 divided by P.
Actually, I forgot about fast input. Let's also introduce it. Okay, let's stop spamming submissions. Let's think about what did what went wrong. So again, I definitely need to multi to calculate this number. So why I wasn't able to do it? So again, if n is at least one hundred, that is. If n dot size is at, is at least three, then I definitely just need any number which is n minus one uh, modular phi of c, and n minus and x is at least thirty. Let's check both conditions. So is my number n minus one? What? Okay, here it should be n and here it should be phi, yes. <sighs> okay, so it should be n modulo phi. So it's n minus 1 modulo phi. It is n modulo phi. This is 0, zero modulo phi and this is minus 1. Let's put 30 here, although it doesn't change anything. Okay, the second condition is that it should be at least 30. To check that, I need to check that it is at least 30, and to that, I need to check that it is at least 31. To do that, I need to check that it is at least 31 divided by P ceiling. And this is the common way to do 31 divided by P ceiling. So this is definitely correct. Okay, this is some number x. Okay, the, the second thing is that if n is at most 99, I can just take uh, this number which is at most 99. And I did it. However, okay, so in, in, in the end we multiply b minus 1 times b to the power x. So I take b minus 1 times b to the power x. Okay. It now should work. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay, this was miserable. This means that I am unable to do anything in my life. What is that? Why am I writing contests at all? Okay, it definitely should accept it. Yeah. Now we need to choose between these problems. And actually, I will need to solve each of them for a while to understand which is the easiest one. For example, let's look at this one. So again, so I have a set of weights. So what is it like iter iterative approach? Iterative approach. Iterative approach looks like f follows. So I have my Boolean vector of some ones, which is target. Yes, yeah, so then I take oh, okay, and I also have. I get it, I need 
I think I need a bit set. Do I need a bit set? So let, let's see if I need a bit set. Oh no, I I think it won't work. So, what does it work? It's an unimaginably hard to say if I need a bit set here. So I have an answer. I have some current uh, backpack, which contains not only VIs, which are set uh, PIs, but also contains all numbers which are reachable by P PIs by some subsequent sums. So there are a lot of ones. Okay, now we need to iteratively find the first one, which is not covered by this array. So let's find this one. We found it. And then... And then we need to do the following. We need to add it here. We actually need to construct an array. We need to add this one here. Well, I don't know for now what to do. Let's look at problem C. So we have a crossword. We spend TI or TI plus one seconds. Equiprobably. We need to find the number, the expected number of crosswords. So actually, I don't like this form of sum of i times pi. Instead, the usual way is otherwise, of course. Of course, we take, let's take each of our crosswords, ci. Yeah. And we need to sum up the probabilities that CI is solved within within time t. So we need to sum up all these probabilities. So how actually the distribution of time spent on uh, at, at, uh, uh, the distribution time point at which we stopped solving CI and succeeded. How is it distributed? Distributed. So it starts in point. It, it's like a binomial distribution. Binomial distribution here. So starting with T1 plus etc. plus Ti ending with T1 plus etc. plus Ti plus I and here we have uh, choose numbers so the height of each column is like choose of I J divided by 2 to the power I
and we need to cut it at point T. So now the problem is as follows. Now the problem is as follows. So you have several binomial distributions. Find the probability below some point T, different T, in each of them. Can we do it? Actually, it's not very easy. We need to calculate like number, sum of choose something like n zero plus choose n one plus etc plus choose n k. We need to somehow calculate it, and I don't know how to do it. Or do I, or, or I know? No, maybe I know. You see, it's not very hard to calculate it. And it's not very hard to move to the next one. So if I have several such sums, I definitely can do it if, for example, case decrease. If these numbers t decrease, and they indeed decrease, because each time this number increases, so this number, the difference between these two decreases. Okay. Okay, then this is not very hard. Let's solve problem C. N and T, we need to read. Ah, uh, not only n and t, but also n integers ti's. Let's call this capital T then. And int Fine dance here is for const vi t and const long long t. I will still need. I don't need factor and phi, and I don't need decode, of course. But this maybe will be useful. So we will need to calculate chooses. So let's find factorial. So to calculate factorials, we will need we will need factorials up to this one. So if factorial is empty, let's fill them. Factorial dot resize n one. And factorial i is product of factorial i minus one i modular m. Then i factorial is power mod of Factorial dot back m minus two m 
And then finally... Uh, I factorial I is product I minus 1. It's product of I factorial I and I modulo M. In the end, return inverse I fact N or fact N. Well, as, as well, we can write here, okay, it doesn't matter. So, also we need to choose number. So, if k is equal to 0 or k is greater than n, we return 0. Else, we return product of factorial n, which is not inverse, and inverse factorials of k and n minus, minus k. Nice. Nice. Okay, actually very nice. Okay, let's go. So we need to find the expected number of puzzles solved. Which is initially zero, we return ans. So let's go through all puzzles. Well, also, let's check the partial sum, which is zero. So let's add partial sum plus equals ti so for example let's look at large partial sum equals partial sum plus i plus one so if large partial sum what's wrong with you if large partial sum is still so if if this is greater than t, we continue. Actually, we can break that. Also, if large partial sum, partial sum is at most t, then we say that ans is sum of ans and 1, and continue. However, there is one last case, which is... find the binomial distribution. So in this case we have a query of choose sum of choose numbers of what kind. So n is i plus 1 and k is t minus partial sum. Okay, and also let's calculate in our n, which is zero, our k, which is also zero. And finally, our sum, which is also zero. No, which is one. Okay, so if our n is zero, let's quickly jump to our n equals query n. Our k is quickly query is equally is quickly zero and sum is one. Ah, uh, let's call it S. 
Okay, in the end we will say that... Well, let's create some sort of half. Half equals m plus 1 over 2. Uh -huh. So, we need three operations. First of all, if we have sum, which is too low, we need to move it down. How do we do it? Let's calculate this sum. To calculate this sum, we need to add up this sum and this sum without the last element. So it will be S plus S minus last choose. This is kind of easier. So while our N is less than query N, we do the following. We say that S is sum of S and S and sum is div of s and choose our n our a and we when after we've done it we can simply plus plus our n okay now we are on our level we are on our level so this is our sum and this is query sum and it's also easy to fix so while query k while our key is less than query key, we do the following. We plus plus our key and us is s is sum s and choose our n our key. And vice versa, if our key is greater than query key, then we need to do it in the opposite order. First of all, we subtract this and then we subtract this. In the end, also, let's keep track of our power of 2, which is uh, power of 2 is product of power of 2 and half. And here we need to add product of power of 2 and our sum. Great. It almost worked. Yeah. Well, it worked. It even should be quite fast. Since... Okay, these operations are, are kind of monotonic. So our k always decreases. And that means that the total number of operations should be linear. In n. So like maybe 3n or 2n. But not many. See? 46 milliseconds. So now we are through with problems C and B. C and D, and we only have A and B. Okay, let's uh, investigate into this problem. And maybe B will be the hardest one. Although I don't know. So we have two permutations. And we need to set up at most, so it's like a constructive problem or what? Well, he can add contest materials. It's funny. So I have two permutations. I can make as many portals as I want. And I need to somehow shuffle R's and shuffle C's.
There cannot be more than one doors in a single cell. Okay, so let's look at the rows. We need to move one to one, three to two, two to three. And this happens actually. But also we need one to three, two to one, three to two. And we do it. Three, one to three, two to one, three to two. Well, it's nice. Isn't it possible to set up some infinite cycle? Actually, I think it is not. If I am in some infinite cycle, then if I go backwards, I'm still in an infinite cycle. But I somehow entered this cycle, so it's not. So it's always a finite uh, walk. It's a finite walk. Okay, maybe the answer always exists. Let's look at some smaller examples. For one, we only have one uh, way, one test. Also, if all permutations are IDs, then I can simply not put any doors at all. And that's easy. So let's look at something more peculiar. peculiar. Something more peculiar. Something more peculiar, for example, can be 1, 2, but here I want 2, 1. Ah, it's easier. I, I need to look, put it like this and like this. Ah, even, even no, even just two A's. So this root goes like this, this root goes like this, however, this root goes like this, and this root goes like this. Yes. And if I want to make both swaps, 1, 2, 2, 1, uh, two, one, two, one, two, one. then this is also easy, I need to write like this. Okay, for 2 by 2, the answer always exists. Maybe we need to make an induction. Let's try making an induction. So I want... Uh, also, n is not equal to m. Ah, uh, n equals n. However, I believe maybe we don't need it to always be rectangular. Uh, to always be square, maybe a rectangle is also fine. Let's see. So we have a, s a rectangle. And we have one which go needs to go to R. One needs to go to R where R is here. Can I do something about it? Not really, because if I put a portal here and a portal here, first of all, it messes up this query. Secondly, secondly, 
Secondly, what? Secondly, I don't know. Ah, oh, the best thing is actually the last column and the last row because we cannot mess anything there. So if something wants into some row, I simply teleport it to the end of this row and everybody's happy. Okay, let's see. So one wants to R. Let's just put some portal here and some portal here. So isn't it happiness? For one, it is indeed some happiness, but for... But for this column... Sorry, I'm sleepy. Okay, for this row, it's not, for this column, it's not a happy uh, circumstance, because it will teleport here, and it doesn't necessarily mean that something lovely happened. Okay, maybe I'm... let's do something a bit weird, but let's solve the problem for this square. And then let's think about what happens here. So N needs to go to some row R, and here N needs to go to some column C where C is here and R is here. Let's think about it. So can I simply put A here? If I put A here, then I need to put another one A anywhere here. Yeah, so it goes into this A, it teleports here and it's happy. Similarly, ah, I can simply put it here, I can put it into R's row and into C column. column. The only issue now is that this person which comes out of here now goes here and he will come out of here well it's easy to fix yeah actually actually it's an easy problem with induction step. So now I simply need to order here that person C prime who wanted to go to N. So now let's say that they need to go to C because he goes to C and then they teleport here and go here. Similarly, I choose the set third person R prime which wanted to go to N and instead I force it to go to R and they go here. Even if A is here, it's it's kinda nice. Let's implement it. And we will have the entire time of our universe to solve problem B. 
So we read n. So didn't I solve this during the con ah maybe I had some other problems to consider. That's why I wasn't able to solve this problem. It's not very hard. It's a nice problem. So we need two permutations, which we will call R and C. Then we need to find several portals, which will be a vector pair PI, PI. And then we go through, we, we print the size. And we print a dot x plus one, a dot y plus one, b dot x plus one, b dot y plus one. This is not needed. Here we also won't need modular operations, I think. So, okay, let, let's keep them just in case. Just in case. So let's find ANS. So we will do the following. We will create a portal. Okay, so we will solve the problem from top to bottom. Actually, Let's run find ans recursively R and C. We will copy these arrays. And here we will have references. Okay, so if R dot back first of all I also want to have inverse permutations. So let's call it IR and inverse R and inverse C. Let's create them. Okay, so if R, let's create again n size, and if R dot back equals n minus one and C dot back equals n minus one. Then we pop back everything.
And we return find ans recursively of again RC IR Also if it is empty we return nothing. Okay. Now let's think. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. So we will find answer recursively for this thing. In the end, we will put a portal between the aim of nth row and the aim of nth column. So, to put it that way, We will do this. Okay. Let's store the aim. And we will swap. We will swap what? So n throw and c column and n throw and n column. Nice. However, now we have an incorrect instance of our problem. It should be one less. So let's fix it. Okay, now the person which wanted to go to N now wants to go to uh, C. Let's write it. How do we write it? We say that the person which wanted to go to N, it's IC N minus 1. Now they want to go to N column aim. And we need to do it here so i see this is this okay in the same manner the person which wanted to go to n minus one throw now they want to go to n row And the person who wants to go to n row is now ir of n minus 1. Great. Now we need to pop back everything, of course. Let me think. Yeah, it's fine. Let's do it. Let's just all, all, always do it. We can do it always. And then we find the answer recursively. And if at least one of them is not n minus one. We need also to add this one. 
Then we return answer. And that's it. It works in linear time. It's, it's funny that it, it works in linear time. Because actually they allow me to work in like square time. Let's see what it gives us. Ah, it doesn't know what X and Y are. We need to define X first and define Y second. Second, I said. Okay, we need some decrementation. Decrement, I meant. Decrement, I meant. Yeah. Again. Okay, now it's somewhere here. Because N was 2, IR was 2. But here we also had 2, unfortunately. How did that happen? Well, sounds like something went wrong because I don't understand why R is of size 2. Ah, it's because of the recursive function, actually, n equals 3. Okay, let's look into it more carefully. Beautiful. Okay, so... Let, let's draw our example. So... Let's draw our example. So first person wants to the third row, third second person watch, wants to the first wants to the first, the third one the second wants to the third one and the third one wants to the second. And here one two three two to one and three to two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so N row M is 1, which is correct. N column M should be also 1. Yes, now we somehow fix. So I see of N minus 1 is 0 because 0 of column wants to the third column ah here it is here it is a small sneaky bug two okay let's see so two one two two And three two to three. Let's see how it works. So this person goes. This person teleports here, here, and here. This person teleports here and here. Okay. For rows, everything is perfect. Four columns. This goes like this: one to three, two to one, and three to two. Great. Now let's look at the bigger example, which is. Uh, why is this happening? Three one five foot. Let's just let's just first of all look at the example and then no no let's let, let's actually draw the aims first. So why? 
What is this? Can I stop it? from happening 31542 and here we have 42135 And we have the following two two one two three one two three four three four four. And five five to five. Let's see. So first one goes like this. Second one goes like this. Third one goes like this. Fourth goes like this. And fifth goes like this. Okay. Here, the first goes like this, the second goes like this, the third like this, the fourth like this, the fifth like this. Okay, it's submit and accepted instantaneously. Now we have a problem. It's funny that uh, this problem is B, but actually I meant issue. We have an issue that problem B is probably not nice. It's probably some huge mathematics with knapsacks and I don't know what. And it threatens me. I don't like this problem because I uh, see each problem with some sort of GP flavor it always works magically on me I simply stop thinking not even I stop thinking but like I never get to think in the right direction GP problems are hard for me so to say and this is really a dynamic programming problem of some sort but nonetheless let's begin Yeah, let's begin. Let's begin. So,
So first of all, let's ensure that we understand the statement correctly. We need to find the set of the item's weights P such that any bag with will be used. That is, for any I, there will be such set of items that their total weight will equal AI. Easy. This simply means that vector A is subset of our uh, additive closure. For any set of items that have total weight less of or than or equal to M, there is a bag into which you can put this set. Okay, this means that actually V is A is an additive closure of P I. Of all sets of the items weights that satisfy points one and two, find the set with the minimum number of weights. So this simply means you are not allowed to take the entirety of set A. Okay. So maybe we can go through from end to the beginning. So we have our set A. Let's go from right to left. So we look at an item. If there is zero, then it's simple. We simply skip it and go to the right. Okay, let's assume that we have a one here. So we need to check. Is it true that this one can be generated by this subset. So if if yes then I can skip it. Ah, I think I can multiply A by A. Yes, so let's multiply. So let's assume that A is a polynomial and let's multiply A by A. So if I have a one here, at least one, this means that actually this number is a sum of two other numbers. Oh my god, I don't want to write a multiplication of two polynomials, but it seems that I'll have to. Okay, I can copy it. Let's copy it. So it's like GitHub, team reference testing public, uh, team book, team book. Why is it? What is failure? Why is it failure? Okay, whatever. So let's copy the FFT. Let's copy the FFT. We don't need, we actually need the complex version because it is faster. And we don't need modular operations. So let's use complex version. So struct complex. So we store real and emac complex operator class. Return real plus other dot real image plus other dot image. 
complex operator multiply return real times other dot real minus image times other dot image and image times other dot real plus real times other dot image and finally divide by a real number return real divided by other and image divided by other okay namespace FFT uses complex of DB so this is removed this I don't need this is mpy which can be taken from uh, use math defines here we include the math We ended up not needing all of this, yeah. So public. Yeah, so what's wrong with cosinus? Cosinus. Ah, I need to create a, a construct. Uh-huh. So I don't need it. I don't need it. What's wrong with you? Okay, I need DB. DB. DB and DB. Let's remove factorials. Let's remove choose. Find answer rec. Instead, I simply have like bool. Ah, I need a vector int. Pi find dance. We can assume that if it is empty, then the answer doesn't exist. Okay. So what do we do here? We read n. If we failed, we return false. We also read m. Then we find ants of a and m. Can AI repeat? Because if they can, I wouldn't like it. No, they cannot repeat. So if ans.empty we print no. Else we print yes. We print Ans dot size and for int i in ans we print this number.
Uh -huh. Okay, let's write a function find dance, which has const i a and int m. So what do we do here? We need to multiply polynomial a by polynomial a. So let's make a polynomial a. Great. Now we need to multiply it by itself. So we need f of t, f of t, f of t, f of t dot. Do we need to pass this? Yeah, we need to pass the size. And it seems like the size should be the minimum number, which is at least 2m plus 1 int size equals zero while to the power of s is less than two times m plus one we need to plus plus s then we find f of t of s we multiply what a and a so let's create like vector vector f of t db poly we can actually uh, make it equal to x Can we? Yeah, we can. It's it's beautiful. Then we multiply poly by itself. And let's go through all numbers starting with M. Uh-huh. Uh, and one uh, till one okay so there are several cases so if ai equals if xi equals one this means that we have number i this means that we need to include it only if it cannot be achieved so if poly i is less than 0.5 then we need it so we add dot push back of i okay if poly is at least 0.5 this means that this number is reachable and if it is reachable we don't need it however there are other cases so let's assume that we don't have this number if it is reached then it is sad it is sad because it means that we lost so we need to return nothing Okay, and finally we reverse ants.begin and ants.end and we return ants. Let's see what it says to us. So it should say yes, no, yes. I didn't subtract them. Okay, also I wanted one more thing. 
No, I didn't. <sighs> Multiply does not take two. Ah, in step. Okay, if you want in step, I can give you S. Are you okay with that? So yes, no, yes. Okay, this is great. Okay, while it's testing, I would like to fix something. I'm really tired of my text editor. So let's change our code style with uh, indentation that is ah, new lines Seth. yeah new lines so i want this i want this i want this i want this i said I want this, I said. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Well, 3,460 milliseconds. Maybe we can replace with float. So. Okay, this time it's wrong answer on test 30. Why did that happen? Well, I don't know. Maybe... I Maybe this is not the best. Well, polynomial of size 1 million. And if it, cho it chose long double. Then maybe it's even tail. But who knows? Who knows? Okay, it's still within TL. And since my solution TL is doubled, it actually works in 3.4 seconds, which is acceptable. Fine. Thank you for watching.